Hi, I'm Fred Armisen. I'm here with Janet Weiss, one of my favorite drummers ever. She's played with Slater Kinney, Quasi, Wild Flag, Bright Eyes, and Jix. You've also got that album that just came out, A Drumgasm. It's great. It's a drum trio. Janet. Fred. We're here in your space. Mm -hmm. Who uses this space? This has been the birthplace of many songs. And now it's strictly a quasi practice space. Do you use the same kit and keep setting it up and taking it apart? I use the same kit. I keep setting it up and taking it apart. I'm not very good at holding on to drum kits, and I've sold actually some of uh, some incredible, some incredible pieces that I should have not sold. Why is that? Why do you think you shouldn't have sold them? Because now they're worth tons of money, and mm -hmm. you can't buy them again. Luckily, my most valuable kit that I had, I sold to Sam. So he's got that in the basement, and we use that on the whole quasi record. For kits that you've sold that you wish you had again, is it a sonic thing? Is it something where you're like, I really need to have this kind of kit? Or is it purely just that you miss, miss the actual? It's sonic, definitely. I used a 65 club date uh, for over 10 years, mm -hmm. and I made all these records with it, including like, Dig Me Out, featuring birds, like people's favorite records. But after so long, I just wanted something new. So I sold that one to a friend, and he actually won't sell it back to me. Really? You can yeah. borrow it, I guess. I did borrow it. I borrowed it for a Jix record. And, took yeah. it, took and what it. kind is it again? It's a 65 Club Date Ludwig. So if anyone has any out there, <laughs> send them this way. Yeah. Over the years, like early Janet Wise, is there something that you no longer uh, do anymore? Is there something that like, oh, I used to like blank kind of? sound and I can't believe I liked it or has it been the same throughout? It's pretty similar. Mm -hmm. Pretty similar. I haven't maxed out, I don't think, the possibilities with even just like a simple setup. Um, I used to use, when I first joined Slater Kinney, the drummer before me had a hubcap mm -hmm. that she, I'm like, I'm not playing a hubcap. I right. can't do that. I just can't play a hubcap. But I had like a ice bell, I think they call it. Right. I and that. Uh, I got rid of that. I don't, I don't think I'll be going back. How has like the setup of your kit changed over the years? This is like my old, sort of like my old setup and really all I've done is add it, I've added another crash cymbal. How about, how about in the, the tilt of the drum, the, <laughs> the, the height of the floor tom, anything like that? I think I've gotten lower mm -hmm. down. I realized... You sit pretty low. Yeah, I realized at some point that it helped my kick pedal foot. I wanted to work on my agility with my kick drum foot mm -hmm. because it's probably it's one of my weaknesses there are many but that's one of my real weaknesses so i realized if i was sitting lower it was easier are there some other things that you would say that you mm. wish was different because everyone's weakness yeah. could be a strength i wasn't trained traditionally so my wrists sometimes i'll realize my hands are turned this way like i'll look down like oh what's happening like flip your hands back over. I mm -hmm. used to play like this all the time and I'd see in pictures that my hands were turned this way, but mm -hmm. over the last two years I worked at turning my turning my hands over so I can use my wrists more and it's helped a lot. Is it a difficult thing to, as you're going along, to make a conscious decision to do something like turn your wrists over? Well, that's why you have to practice. How um, many times a week do you think you practice? Quasi, if we have something coming up, we'll play three times a week. Mm -hmm. And then I should practice at least two times by myself. How's your tempo? What's your tempo? How would you describe your sense of tempo? I think it's tempo? pretty good. I've heard worse. Do you hold the tempo or do you follow it? Like if you're playing with whatever band you're with? Yeah, it depends. It depends who it is. Usually I hold it, but in a band like the Jicks, Joanna and Steve are setting the tempo. I can see Joanna's foot stomping the ground. <laughs> and I have to look at her foot and follow her foot. Tempo to me is, it's important, but it's not the most important thing. Usually I speed up. I'm not really a slower downer. If you've ever sat down at someone else's kit, like what's the first thing that you change? What's the first thing you're like, okay, I got it. Why yeah. is this like this? My, my snare is in a much different place than anybody else's. Mm -hmm. Usually people sit higher and put the snare right. here. Because I love John Bonham so much, mm -hmm. I wanted like, the cymbals have to be flat. Yeah. You know, the snare has to be flat. The floor tom has to be flat. Not the rack tom The rack much. tom, I can't play, I just physically can't play it flat, mm -hmm. but I don't think he had a flat. I just imitated him. Okay, so before you were, you were talking about how you sit low, be, partly because of your uh, pedal. So I'm gonna move this floor, and I wanted to have a look at that. Oh, Do you, no. like if you're really, really uh, hitting heavy, is your heel up? Or yes, are you... heels up. Uh -huh. Always up. 
And oh. do, you, do you feel like you have... Um, Look at that. You it's know what? <laughs> Finding duct tape of a different color for a drummer is good luck, just so you know. It's an ancient, ancient... Um, it's an ancient mythology that drummers who found tape on their feet always had good shows. What's in the kick? Do you have anything in it? Yeah. The, the pillow that I bought it with is in there. So it's pretty dead. Yeah. Can I have pretty, a listen to it? I don't like low end. I don't know if you know that, but I don't like low end at oh. all. The patterns that you've come up with for especially Sleater Kinney songs, composition is so great and so original. I, I don't know where they come from. Where, where, do you, where do you start in your head? It's all about listening, and then I just, I just hear something. For Slater Kinney, I would listen to a lot of Devo. Like, you know, the most melodic, incredible drums, like drum patterns and like how to get away from the backbeat. In quasi and other bands, I tend to want to get into like the, the backbeat, you know, like I want to feel it. But Slater King is different. Would you mind doing, a, a, if I requested a beat, just a little bit of something, mm -hmm. would you mind doing no. some of it? Oh, please edit out that <laughs> microphone hitting the <laughs> hi-hat. Uh, that was not intended to be part of this, and I don't want to embarrass her. I don't want it going out on YouTube that it's an embarrassing moment. That was humiliating. I'm so sorry that that happened. You remember Get Up? Yeah, dun, but I had... Man. So it's... That's the, oh. that's the intro. I love it. <laughs> I really do. One beat. Yeah, one. I, think I, I think I remember that. I think I remember that. It sounds like your drums are tuned pretty low. Yeah, can these I are. Hear, these can are. You're like just the snare. Yeah. It and, probably needs to be tuned. And it's a little deadened, so you have these yeah. things on it. What are these called? I don't even know. They are things. called moon gels. Mm -hmm. There's like a resonant sound in this room that is really irritating if I don't deaden things. And mm -hmm. it's like a quonk, quonk, quonk. Would you say this is the kit that you're, you think you'll be using for like a while? I will be using this kit for the next, for the next like touring cycle for Quasi. Mm -hmm. You pack a lot of force into very little um, motion. Where is that energy coming from? Because it's not like you took a big swing to lay into anything, but the volume. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to all come from your wrist, but it doesn't. A lot of it comes from my arms. I had a drum teacher once tell me that it doesn't even come from your finger. It, from your wrist, it comes from your fingers. Yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, that's how it's supposed to be. Sometimes I don't like drummers that play like that. Mm -hmm. It's like, sound starts to sound really generic if like, you're doing it exactly the way everyone else was taught to do it. I mean, that's why I don't... Upset. What if I was referring to myself? You would <laughs> just have criticized me. <laughs> I've heard you play. You don't play generic. Yes. <laughs> now, just as a final test, will you take off that wing nut as quickly as you can without <laughs> dropping it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And go. Oh, this one's so tight. That was terrible. Great. That was Janet Weiss and is Janet Weiss. Thank you very much. Thank you.